The people that deny that digitization is going to impact every corner of the economy are going to get left behind. Every industrial company is also going to have to be a software and analytics company. We have had a strong tradition that we want to develop everything internally. You need to pilot, you need, need to learn, you need to try things. I think in, in today's world, this is how we should also work. Hi, everyone, and thanks for having me in this session. I'm going to tell you a story about uh, Industry Hack. It's not really open data per se, but it's uh, more like showing the, the power of openness to traditional bigger companies. So what this is essentially about is that uh, we have built a network of technology startups, larger technology companies, software consultancies, data scientists, service designers, and we call it the so-called digitalization task force. And, and this community of, of companies and people are then kind of like, they, they are challenged with interesting challenges uh, by the traditional uh, bigger companies. And uh, our company is, Industry Hack is also a company. It's a two and a half year old one. And uh, we started uh, kind of like uh, with the idea that no matter how traditional a company is, it has to become a software and analytics company. And that's actually a famous quote from, from Jeff Immelt, the, the CEO of, of GE. And kind of like from that thought, we started to think that how could that transformation be done? What could be done to help <coughs> traditional, traditional industries to, to open up and, and really grasp the opportunities of digitalization? So currently, we built a format for that. And what we promise to our customers is that within three months, they will get six to eight prototype demos that are developed to a specific problem that they throw to this uh, community of problem solvers. Basically, the, our process looks like this. We, we kind of, uh, uh, where we start is, is this is a strategical work for the companies. And then, uh, together with them, we scope a challenge, we scope a problem that they want to find new angles and new solutions to. Then we find the best teams and the companies uh, to actually uh, propose a solution, to, to start to uh, co-develop that one. And in the co-development phase, there is also a two-day hackathon where we invite these teams on site together with the host company that they can have really intensive dialogue, interaction, and really build something concrete that they demonstrate in the end of the co-development. And uh, in, the, in, the, in the last day of hacking, so to say, uh, the C-level people, the management of the company decides that which ones of these concepts are then validated further. And then the last phase being the validation, really testing that concept in real life, tested in with the end user, with the real customer, with the real business environment, and then making the decision after the validation that should we go forward with the team and company to actually build a new service or build a new product. Let's take a couple of examples. What, is, what does it mean to scope the challenge? For example, with Ponce, who manufactures forest harvesters, they wanted to find new angles and new ideas, how to make their uh, harvester operators' day better, more efficient, how to make the driver's driver more alert and focused on his or her job. Or on the other hand, if something breaks down, could he or she remotely actually do the maintenance without having to actually wait half a day for somebody to come in the middle of nowhere to repair the machine. Or with Talanxilia, thinking the customer journey, customer experience, not just taking a ship from one city to another, but actually what else could be brought to the process that is actually an experience and, and, and kind of like a, what kind of, for example, services could be brought to the end user. When the challenge is defined, uh, we publish it in our platform. And through the platform, the companies and, uh, and the teams coming from those community companies can, uh, can be invited aboard. And who are these people? Basically, these are two to three person teams, as mentioned, coming from technology startups or coming from bigger technology companies or software houses, service designers, so on. Companies such as these. 
but just a, just, a, just a small example of those. We have roughly 250 companies currently in the, in the community. Then the best part being that, the, that really putting these people uh, to talk with the host company mentors really bounce the idea, the initial approach that they have, and then finally bringing them where the magic happens. So if it's with Ponsa, we brought the people to northern Finland, we put them together with the harvest operators in the harvesters, and then they went into the woods and started to cut tree. And they can really see what does the operator do. They really understand the end user. They can get uh, kind of like really straightforward answers to the questions that they are actually solving a relevant problem for the company. Or with Mercedes-Benz, thinking in their new flagship store that how, the, how, the, how to make the car maintenance process more transparent from the end user perspective. A lot of paperwork, a lot of phone calls, so much things that, the, that you could already be automated and, and, and so much things that, that data becomes very essential and, and, and helping in the process. Or together with Kone, thinking in their R&D laboratory, the, the kind of like new, new, new service concepts, both for the, uh, for the end user as well as, as the facility managers. Then the validation phase, taking the best concepts to really, uh, really test test it in the real environment, so with the real end users in the real business context, and, and seeing what are, the, what are the results. Is this a business viable case? Is this something that, that uh, both the company and the team's company want to, want to continue further? And, and, and really kind of like getting the real feedback, because that's often the problem. There is no kind of like lack of ideas as such, but how to really validate those ideas and, and kind of like where to find the format to, to test them further. And then it all aims to the acceleration phase where these ideas actually are bring to life, meaning that they have become new products and services. A couple of examples with uh, Lassila Tikanoja, LNT, one of the biggest recycling companies in the Nordics. One of the concepts was about, uh, sorry about the finish, but it's, uh, it's about the kind of like easy pickup. If I have a fridge or a bed or something big that I want to get rid of, it's actually quite time consuming and, 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 and actually expensive for me to get rid of it. But with this concept, the idea was that it wouldn't be that cost that much for me. And from the L&T side, they were optimized the uh, roads of the recycling trucks so they could actually pick up multiple waste at the same time. Or another example, we were thinking about the, the kind of customer journey within the solar uh, energy uh, production, uh, solar energy market. And, and really, if you want to start to produce solar and use solar, uh, kind of like the, the, the process needed a bit refinement, so to say. So one of the ideas was that how can I, as a, as a kind of like end user, first of all, validate is this investment worth it and, and does it even make sense if I buy those panels to my home or to my summer house? And, and there was this service created that you can actually click your house on the map and then it will show that, okay, what is the size of the investment? What is actually the uh, amount of energy produced in what times of year? Uh, what are the actual savings? And, and then what's the payback time of the investment? So kind of like this already makes it a bit easier to think that, that kind of like, should I do the investment or not? Uh, just a couple of examples, but it's, it's really where we focus is, is, is to get concrete results, not just hacking and, and building concepts, but if they don't lead anywhere, uh, kind of like then that, that's a really, really crucial metric for us. So, so far we have done 38 of these challenges with very different companies within very different industries. We've seen quite a bunch of teams, almost 300 demos that have been built. Uh, 40 pilots that have been done with different customers together with the, the community teams and six new products that have actually come to life, uh, some of which we, we just saw. Some companies we have uh, been lucky to, to work with. Uh, some of you might also recognize some of them. Uh, and what has been great to see is that this is not really an idea that we, we do this kind of a project and then it's done, but rather that this is actually a constant funnel for uh, feeding new ideas and new teams and new ways of working to these corporations kind of like processes and really make them come back and, and use this as a, as a funnel for innovation. So for example, if we take Ponce or Cargotech, those companies have done multiple challenges with us. Uh, L&T as well actually have done three. Uh, Kone Cranes has done three and, and Fortum actually uh, is doing now the fourth one currently with us. And it's happening in Stockholm in, in early December. So in their headquarters, they will be there the hackathon phase of the challenge. But uh, a bit uh, kind of like I was specifically asked to, to talk about uh, one specific case, and uh, at least we have one in the audience who might also know about, about this. Uh, it was, we worked with Stara, which is a uh, company taking care of 
Helsinki basically taking care of uh, renovation, construction, gardening, and, and, and generally the, that, that everything works in the city. And that challenge was called uh, Street Reboot. And it took place uh, in early October this year, the, the hackathon days. And, and kind of the idea of the challenge was that kind of like really thinking that the future of city maintenance and, and, and both kind of like the uh, maintenance operations as, as well as then, then, then uh, the service innovation. And, and in, in the core is, is of course the, the kind of like uh, usage of, of, of data or massive amounts of data and, and then, then IoT. And, and kind of like it was the uh, sort of with, with the goal to, uh, to, to actually uh, so that the, the maintenance and, and things would be done when they are actually needed. So make it, make it even, even more accurate and, and really serve the, the end user being the citizen and, and, and the city better. And, and behind this, uh, this challenge, there was an e, uh, EU-funded uh, funded project and part of it, which was called the Urban Big Data Innovation Platform uh, in Smart City Contexts. Uh, context. Uh, also known as the Reboot the City, so that's, that's where the street reboot came from uh, that we did with Star. Uh, what kind of data sources were used? Uh, hundreds and hundreds of utility machines, uh, as well as maintenance machines, their locations, their roads, uh, uh, how are they used, was, was uh, kind of like uh, g given to the participants, and then also quite a bunch of different open data sources uh, that were, uh, are listed also here. So be it map-related data or uh, be it, uh, for example, one, uh, one specific API where you can get uh, information about the snow plows and, and, and so on. So I think this was a, a pretty good example of, of, of really kind of like how to, how to make good use of, of, of various open data sources to then create a, kind of like a specific solution for, a, in a way, like for a, a specific environment, in the, this case, the startup operations and the city. So, to kind of summarize that, that what, was, uh, what, what Stata was looking for is, is, is kind of like how to make, they, make their operations excellent and, and also finding, finding the uh, better uh, demand-driven services for the city. In practice, when this uh, challenge was formulated, uh, then the, uh, we started to look for the best teams and, and, and actually eight teams took part in the challenge. Uh, these kind of uh, groups of, of three people from uh, different team names from different companies. And how we started is that we put these teams to, once again, with the same format to talk with the people of Star. So they went to see how the machinery works. They went to see, uh, in practice, how the data is gathered. They went to talk to the, to the operators of the, of the machinery, who they were, uh, some of the teams were, were building the solutions for. So really kind of, uh, we emphasize the, the empathy in industry hack, so that actually the, the people who come from outside the industry can really get the understanding that how do people, how do people work uh, in their everyday within, within the, the context. So really talking to the people, asking questions, understanding how things work and really getting, getting familiar so that the idea and the concept that they are developing is going to the right direction. Then once the, this uh, kickoff was, was done, uh, this team spent two days uh, together with Stara actually hacking together something concrete to show that uh, from idea to a prototype demonstration. And, and, and a various amount of different kind of solutions were built. And in the end of the two days, they were presented to the, uh, to the jury who made the decision about the follow-up uh, projects. And actually from, uh, from this challenge, uh, one team was, was selected as the so-called uh, kind of like, they were selected to the validation phase and they were called Team Kartis, so they came from or come from Kartakeskus, which is the map center of Finland. Not sure if it's the right uh, uh, kind of like translation, but kind of you get the, get the point. And uh, they uh, built an application called Helper, so actually an app that recommends uh, kind of gathers data from different sources and recommends for the for the driver an optimal route uh, to when when when. He, and she, he or she starts in the winter to take care of the streets. And then it's up to the uh, driver to decide whether he or she uses the route. But it's, it's, it's something that, that is recommended. And then based on what the driver selects, then the app also uh, learns that, okay, if, if the recommendation weren't taking, uh, taken into account, then it will learn that, okay, why and, and get even better and give better recommendations. Another one uh, I wanted also to... Uh, uh, to kind of like uh, 
show uh, another team, another example. Uh, so this team actually, uh, they, they, they created a friction, friction prediction model for uh, uh, individual street segments. So to quite uh, different, uh, different ideas, various, uh, various thoughts, uh, what to kind of like go forward with. And uh, I think I still have some time. Where is, what's the time? Five minutes, perfect. Then I'll go to another case because uh, this is something we did. I mentioned we work with Fortum in, uh, uh, in Sweden. We also work with Hayab. Uh, actually, we had, a, had an event in Hudiksvall uh, in this September. In, in Sweden, and, and then the challenge uh, was a bit different. So they were looking for uh, new ways to make the load handling easier and safer, and also uh, make the uptime of their cranes better. And, and, and also, on, on top of that, maybe the, uh, the kind of like a bit uh, uh, understand the, the possibilities of new business models. So again, the similar kind of a process that we, we selected actually eight teams. Uh, they came uh, six from Sweden, two from Finland, and, and we went to Hudiksvall for spent those two days. Companies such as these, some of you might, uh, might uh, no, uh, know some of those, and really put them to use the cranes, talk to the crane operators, really understand, again, the end user and the context that they are building, uh, building the uh, solutions for. And, and for those two intensive days, they also get very challenged by the, by the staff, host staff of the company and their mentors, because the, of course the idea is that build something that is relevant for the, uh, for the host company as well, so that it actually gets forward to the validation phase, because that's also the motivation for the participating team. It's a, it's a, it's a new business for them as well. And they actually selected three teams that they are currently piloting with. Uh, most the, the one of the one of the solutions is related to a better vision for the uh, for the crane operator, and then the others are are more related to better data gathering and, and better uh, kind of like understanding the uh, usage data of the cranes. So I guess now it would be a good time for for some questions. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I'm I'm Juho Kokkola. <laughs> happy happy to be here and. Uh, yeah, please. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's on. It's on, okay. Yeah. Uh, with the uh, helper app there, team, um, how much healthcare data was used to create the optimal route? Uh, I guess none. Actually, I was, I was not part of the... Uh, Myself in the challenge, uh, actually, for more detailed questions about what was actually done in the Stara case, I, I can. I'm happy to connect you with my colleague who was actually running the challenge. So they were not optimizing the the citizens. Uh, I think or in the this case, the, view. yeah. No. Uh, the, this case, the, the helper was more for the uh, actually the winter maintenance crew and then the drivers of the kind of like snowplow trucks to optimize their route during the day. Um, what's the selection process for the teams that yeah. participate? So basically it's uh, uh, kind of like there are two alternatives. Uh, depending if, if the host company wants to have it an open call, it's an open call and anyone can apply, just form a team and apply. And then we screen them or the host company screens the, the teams and then we make the selections of the, of the best ones. But it can also be that it's a, a sort of an invite only model and, and it means that then depending on what is the challenge, we uh, browse through the community and, and we do a short list of roughly 15 to 20 companies that we suggest that, hey, should we invite teams from these companies? And then the host makes the selections that, okay, actually this is a nice diversity, complementary skill sets, and, and, and okay, let's go with that. So it depends on the, on the wishes of the, of the host company. Thank yeah. you, Juho. Yes. Um, I was wondering who, who owns the IP uh, yeah. when prototypes Good are created? Good question. So the, what, what the teams create, uh, they, it's, it's their IP, kind of like they have the rights to their creation. And then they still kind of like own the, own the rights uh, to that during the pilot and validation phase. But then it's of course up to negotiate. And if it's something that kind of like the host company wishes to have as part of their business, then it's kind of like usually they purchase the IP from the team or the company. But we have also seen that the company decides, or the participating team and the company decides that hey, we might actually productize this ourselves and then they can be licensing the service to others and, 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 and sort of also, of course, the, the host company if, if, he, if they are interested. But in a way, we are, 
we kind of like after the, uh, the validation phase, there is a short period of time for the, uh, for the host to sort of uh, uh, make the, they have the first right to sort of negotiate the further development always. So then they can say, say yes or no, and, and, and then, then if they want to go forward, then, then they discuss with the team what is the procedure to, to actually acquire the IP if they wish, or the team to productize themselves and then license it later on. But kind of like what teams create, it's, it's, it's team's IP. So. And, and all the teams also get rewarded. So uh, after they have returned the demo before the validation, uh, it's roughly 1,500 to 2,000 euros per team that is, is sort of a reward for the, it, it's not really uh, the price of the work, but it's a kind of like gesture to cover the costs. And, and it's, it's not really about free labor, but, but rather kind of like a, this mutual respectful collaboration. So that's also there. Hi, my name is Bjorn Hagström. Hey. Uh, how much does it take to run one of these hackathons, a, a ballpark figure? Sorry, how, how much, much does it take to run a hackathon, one of these? Yeah, uh, I mean, like this, this challenge is roughly, uh, uh, I would say, kind of like, I'm happy to discuss, discuss the exact price tag, but we are roughly thinking, if we think of these validation pro uh, projects, it's roughly 20,000 euro each. So what we recommend is that the host company budget for uh, 60,000 euros for the, uh, for, the, uh, for the further development. There's a question over here. Uh, two, two questions. Uh, yes. so, so your business model in this is connecting the, the companies and, and, and the teams, and mm. then they move forward themselves. In yeah. This so basically, we, 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 also, we, we have a kind of like the, uh, the, the host company pays for us to actually run the service, and we have an own, own platform which we use as a tool to run through these innovation challenges. That's something the host company pays for. And then we have some uh, s different success fees depending on how this collaboration actually goes forward and, okay. and so both can get, get out you of get, it. You get money out of it afterwards as well. Uh, the other thing is, uh, I think this is, is, is great. Uh, I've done a lot of hackathons uh, organizing myself, and the, 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 the challenge is always to what can you do for real? So exactly. you just don't meet and, and have, a, have exactly. a laugh and then it goes exactly. away. Uh, and this is a great uh, way I've done it. But have you tried to doing this for the public sector because you have the Good pr question. Procure procurement yeah. processes is, can be yes. hard to combine with these uh, processes? Yes. yes, and actually we have, we have worked with uh, Tekes, the, the, the Finnish Vinova. On, on one of uh, one of uh, we have done one of these challenges, and there's actually follow-up projects on that as well. And then we work with the Ministry of uh, the the Prime Minister's Office, uh, and and basically use this uh, this this model um, in a way. It's it's like a design contest that that can we just in a way like tweak the model so that we can make the participants and their suggestions anonymous, so that actually it fits to the public procurement uh, design contest process so so then then it also works for there and and it's true is there's going to be uh, there's going to be soon quite a quite a lot of interesting opportunities especially in the public sectors where we are currently thinking of how to how to make this model work even better there because it's very much similar collaboration and experimentation is is needed there If there are no more questions, I have just a question sure. for you. It's about uh, the recruitment of the uh, challenge teams. Have yeah. you had any difficulties in, in getting the right kind of mix? You said you have mm. some kind of screening mm. process. Mm. You want to make yeah. sure you yeah. get the right teams for the, for the right challenge. But I'm thinking it must be very time consuming and require a lot of effort mm. uh, from, from the challenge teams to go into mm. something like this, yes. especially if they're not sure exactly what they're going exactly. to get out of it. So what do you do to get them all excited but it's, about it? It's, it's it all about commit? clear communication, that, that what is the process and what is kind of like, this is, uh, this is a business opportunity for mm. the participating teams. So basically what they are looking for is that, okay, we can actually get into a, uh, into a very interesting industry. We get to talk to the really top management of a big corporation and really understand what are their struggles. And then we can show what we can do, what we can concretely hack together and, and propose as a demo. And then if they get excited, we have a chance to be in the 20,000 euro pilot and really make it a, make it a reality and, and make it a, like a proof of concept and, and test it out. And then there is potentially new collaboration and, and, and further, further collaboration ahead. So in a way, like when, when, when framing, framing it like that and, 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 and taking into account that there is time to re really wrap your mind around the, the customer and then really kind of like there is the, they have been committed to, the, uh, to getting some of these uh, ideas forward and there are actually pretty good chances to get into there, then I think that's, that's, that's enough for the, for the good teams to kind of like uh, 
reveal themselves or, or then answer to our invitation positively. So apart from, from having the chance of making business out of it, the, mm. the, the teams also see it as a learning opportunity. Yes, uh, definitely. To get into definitely. industry, to get to talk to the yes. right people. Yes, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. I Both. Think, I think that's a brilliant concept. And I, I really you. hope that you're going to expand to all of, of the Nordics. Slowly, slowly and steadily. Could yes. you start in Denmark by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> we we are in talk, so happy to talk more about that. Excellent. But yes, definitely we are we are looking to other other places as well. And, and we've done one of these tried out in Estonia, once in Germany, one in even in Japan. So kind of like wow. looking to looking to see see where it works. But of course, Nordics is a is a kind of like pretty natural yeah. uh, area to to be more present. And now starting in slowly in Sweden. So great, good, excellent, exciting.